Okay, Joe. So do you want to do you want to just tell me about the the mm. relative efficiencies of different animals and, and how they how they've been used as well? Yes. Well, some animals are very efficient in terms of their you know, costs and benefits to a farm. And pigs are a very good example. Pigs are very cheap. They basically eat things that people will discard. They will uh, uh, run around in the forest eating things like acorn. And they will eat you know, the potatoes that people don't want and the things that have rotten. And so they're, in that regard, they're very cheap. Pigs also don't do very much for you, except eventually they can be consumed themselves. Horses are the other extreme. Horses are very expensive to maintain. A well-functioning, efficient horse basically eats the kind of food that people eat, namely oats. And that's very expensive. Cows are in between. Cows will eat grass and straw and things that people usually don't eat, but things that have to be grown on land that can also be used for other purposes and needs to be uh, processed with labor, which has, of course, a cost. Uh, but all farm animals are in some sense quite expensive and therefore it is quite conceivable and there are many examples of societies had the option of uh, applying farm animals on a large scale but decided against it because the costs really exceeded the benefits. In that regard most of Europe, particularly Western Europe, was perhaps the exception rather than the rule in the sense that it became uh, from very early on, certainly in the early Middle Ages, an agricultural society that depended very heavily on farm animals. And the Europeans devised a very sophisticated and quite complex system by which these farm animals would be fed. And the basic idea was that after the crop was taken in, they let the animals graze over the stubble. And there were sophisticated institutional arrangements to make this possible. But this is the heart of what we call in Europe, open field agriculture. This is a very specific European system, and it was above all a way of feeding the animals. In more, in more modern times, people have found more sophisticated and more efficient ways of feeding uh, animals. Uh, in particular, uh, what developed in the Low Countries and in England a little bit later, is a system in which farmers actually grew fodder crops. Uh, things like clover or turnips, which were grown with the sole purpose of feeding uh, the animals. That's quite costly, but as a result, these animals were extremely well fed. And of course, well fed animals means a, a lot more milk output, a lot more meat output. And if you have um, uh, haulage animals, you get a lot more energy that's being produced by them. And so, again, there are costs and there are benefits. And depending a bit on the kind of animal you're talking about and the technology at hand, uh, uh, you can, in some sense, cost out each alternative technique and pick the most efficient ones. And that, is, uh, uh, in some sense, defines the changing role of farm animals in a European context. Most other societies outside Europe made very different choices. In the Middle East, for instance, the dominant animal became the camel because the camel had one very do uh, dominating characteristic, which is it doesn't need to drink all the time, which of course in the Middle East is, is, is difficult. In other societies, uh, animals became relatively rare. Um, uh, buffaloes were used in uh, uh, East Asia, in particular in, 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 in the East Indies, but also to some extent in China and in Japan, for haulage. But they are far more expensive there. As a result, they were far rarer. The same is true for horses. Some societies became very committed to the horse. In other, in other societies, horses just turned out to be uh, more expensive. Uh, and so, uh, out, outside of Europe, as I said earlier, animals, large animals were absent. Within the Eurasian continent, each society made its choice based on the efficiency of the animals at hand as well as its own climatic and topographical conditions.